A Rishi is a seer. What does he see? He sees himself. And he sees how he emerges from his own self. And he sees how the universe emerges. And that seeing is a cognition. It's not a composition. There is no intellect in it. There is no expression of feeling. There is nothing. All of these feelings, of course, all of this intellect, all of this construction is within it. But the expression and how it comes from the Absolute is on the basis of a direct experience. The Rishi sees, hears the vibrations of natural law and chants them. And this is the Veda. Now, when you have a song or a chant or a melody, it has a structure and it has a system of it developing from one stage to the other and evolving and how the sound evolves and becomes more and more and more from one pure being, one sound to many sounds, many sounds, many sounds to the entire universe. These words, these sounds structured in the way they are structured which means actually how many syllables are in how many sutras and how many richas and how many padas and how many aksharas actually the physical number of them and how they go from sound to silence and how they interact with each other this is how natural law works and that is the great vision of his holiness Mahashi Mahesh Yogi the great sage from the Vedic tradition who has seen in the Veda that the vibrations of the sounds of the Ved are the sounds of the laws of nature. And his vision was so complete that he said all these great terms that you hear in the Vedic literature, in Christianity, in Islam, in Taoism, in Buddhism about the grandeur of the human being is because all of these sounds are actually in your body. They are written in the cells, in the organs, in the organ systems of your physiology. And the reason we have four lobes of the brain, because there are four chapters of yoga. The reason we have five divisions in the thalamus is because there are five chapters in Nyaya. And the reason why in Nyaya or in your salamis, which is a part of your brain, there are 16 subdivisions which if have a function, is because the book of Nyaya, which is the basic blueprint of your salamis, is divided into 16 principles that are very clearly defined. And therefore when I looked under Marshi's guidance and his blessings, about all the 40 aspects of Veda and the Vedic literature and their divisions and subdivisions and their functions, it was a tremendous enlightening discovery that there is an architectural design available in the Veda. On the basis of this architectural design, our body is made. And every sutra, every sukta, every pada, every richa, of the Vedic literature is written within our body in our own human physiology. Marshi said now we have to look how the dynamics of this happens. What is the interaction? Now we have found here is this, here is this, here is this, here is this. How do they work together? How do they interact together? How do they evolve? Why do we start somewhere and go somewhere as a child and grow up and our brain grows and develops and the structures of our brain, how they connect with each other and how we get enlightened and what happens when we get enlightened and what awakens when we get enlightened in our physiology. How we do that? And I said, how we do that, Marshi? <laughs> how can we know it? It's such a complex thing. It takes years of study of physiology, even modern science doesn't know enough to tell us how this happens at all these levels. And he said, no, it is all in the Veda because Veda is total knowledge. And take the Ramayana and study the Ramayana and find that the dynamics of Ram beginning somewhere 
getting towed somewhere by Vishwamitra, taking taken into the forest, meeting this Trishi, meeting that Rakshasa, meeting that demon, meeting that god, meeting that bird, meeting that hormone or that, that, uh, that monkey, or meeting this and this, is actually the story of how the physiology works. And based on Maharshi's guidance and his direction, I have spent glorious times for several years, because it's so intricate, looking into those dynamics and found a perfect correlation, as if the Ramayana is actually, for me today, a scientific thesis, a scientific description more than a thesis, a precise scientific description of how our body works, how our body evolves, how Ram who is sitting within us, how he takes over and removes Ravana, and how he removes disease and makes the proper connections, and how Hanuman flies in our body like the hormones, and how Kaushalya is the artery of, that supplies the nourishment for Ram, and how Kaikeyi is the artery that supplies the nourishment that supports Bharat, and how Dasharat is sitting in our midbrain, and how the brothers interact with each other, and why they meet this in the forest at this time, and why they meet that in that time, and how the actual relationships between them and between their structures and between the forests and the bridges and why Ravana has 10 heads and why he has 20 arms. They are all part of the physiology of our body. If the cerebellum... <laughs> now we know we truly are wholeness. I could of course tell you Ram is here and, and, and Sita is in the heart and Sita is the nourishing value and how the four arms of Lakshmi are in the four chambers of the heart and how they have in the Vedic tradition you have a family tree and how the family tree of all the mothers correspond to the exact family or branches of our aortic system, our arterial system going into very great scientific detail of actually things that I had to wait because science didn't know enough yet about the brain to prove it and be fascinated and amazed how whatever science had discovered corresponded to some character in the Ramayana, to some event in the Ramayana, to some reality in the Ramayana.